killed him, right? Morphling in the very strong. And nothing to say. He looked like a hard carry, so they do have the skill. All right. Well, I am gonna go ahead and not let you guys predict because I'd actually like to see. The you already know how it will end. Thanks to Kyle's for fun. So we will go straight to our casters for EG versus DNC. It, again, it, it comes down to, we've talked about it so many times, so many knobs for Ice Frog to have to dial in to be able to balance. And like 1,400 gold for this item, and it's not worth 1,400 gold on some, and it's worth way more on others, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's it's an interesting concept. But I mean, that's obviously also going to be a part of balancing off the Roche, right, is making sure that the shards feel evenly distributed, yeah. because like we're, we're talking about how crucial the second Roche is because usually the teams are start drafting specifically for heroes that shard is really good on. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the really absolutely best shards get nerfed and the worst ones get buffed, you might reach this equilibrium where it doesn't maybe feel as impactful. Because every game we've seen so far in this tournament, more or less, that second Roche, the shard is just going on an S tier hero for it, right? What if? All right, okay, just hear me out here. Whoever kills the second Roche. The lowest net worth hero on their team automatically consumes it. And it goes, it keeps going up based on who already has it to, at that point. I like that. You know what it's, that means? If you have a read in the game that you're just slightly ahead of net worth of the bottom, you just take one of your items and break it right before Roche dies so you can That's get the true. That we is, have new meta game of dropping your items as Roche goes down. This is a good start, by the way, for our Mel. Uh, we haven't talked about this too much during the during the casting, I do think, but getting the level one D ward for that extra hundred gold as well as the experience. Yeah, this half. matters. The high the higher the level of play, the more these small advantages matter. And Armel is already playing in, you know, a matchup that I think nowadays is probably relatively even. And this could maybe swing the scales in his favor. Uh, Puck, if you go back a year, I think would just be favored against Lina. I think now with all these runes and just the abundance of water, there is uh, quite a bit of water. You can probably break even with Lena here. I'm curious to see how this plays out. Yeah, I remember I'm last tournament, <laughs> in terms of uh, the majors, that is, uh, EG, Abed specifically played basically two heroes the whole tournament. Puck uh, and Storm. Storm Spirit, and yeah, this Puck right here. Uh, but like you said, has gotten some tweaks Denied. and hasn't been as favorable. I mean, typically, you would. this was a later pick in the draft, I think, right? This was the last pick, if I'm not mistaken, from EG, unless I'm just completely... Yeah, it definitely was. Yeah. Uh, which, again, last patch wouldn't have happened. This was a very high priority pick. Yeah. And it has been in some of the series here, not necessarily like first phase as it was back then, but it has not been a last pick only. Um, right. Especially some of the Chinese teams has liked picking, uh, have liked picking a third pick when they get a little bit of information and they want to buy themselves uh, some time in the draft with choosing their other course. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I think they've exclusively played at mid, Puck doesn't really have many terrible matchups. Like, it can hold its own against basically everything. A Bok is taking quite a beating here. Yep, fly. Another Earth Spike. This, I believe, is the third one with the Fable. Oh, the body blocks. Easy. The right clicks are enough. First blood for EG. And this is exactly what they need with this high tempo, kind of earlier game lineup. As crit, looks like he pulled a wave here. And Boomy wants to try to pull this off a bit. You're talking about these these mid heroes, and it's funny after all these changes and all these tweaks, Queen of Pain still completely missing in action. Feels like a last resort if all your other heroes are taken. Like, eh, I guess I'll take Queen of Pain. So, well, Clock was meta for like a week. That's the best she's had in five years. So was that the Mjolnir <laughs> with the spell lifesteal thing? Oh, that, that, that was that's a couple true, years ago. That's been two weeks, I guess. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, pretty annoying here to deal with uh, when she is in meta. As we see Abed, he'll be able to get this bottom water rune. And it looks like the top rune is actually being held by a crit. So Armel won't be able to get one for himself. In fact, finds the right clicks of crit. Gets slowed down a bit and now TP to fill that bottle. I, oh, he does no, not he have TP'd, one. He TP'd for the salve. Oh. He was already in top lane. This okay. is a really high impact rotation from crit, actually. Just denying the water rune and forcing the Abaddon TP. Mm -hmm. Uh, and forcing that salve out means that this salve is now not available in the top lane and maybe they can get that extra bit of pressure out on the Morphling as a result. Gabby only two tangos. There's a lot of region currently sitting on Ice Ice Ice. He's more than happy to trade, even even unfavorably, just because he has an abundance of region. It could work out just fine anyway. Need to make sure you get the CS though. Seeing a couple of easy ones there, just warming up. Yeah, a little bit late on the bottle in the mid lane. That kind of surprised me from Armel's perspective, but... 
does have it now, so we'll see who gets the rune advantage as the water runes are going to get back up again in about 50 seconds here. But you can see the CS very, very even to start things out in that mid lane. So we'll see how this continues to go. But I mean, in terms of rotation, once Abed hits level 6, that's when you get that first coil on somebody, probably a rotation mid, if anything. But how does uh, how does Alina like to play? Is it kind of similar to get this Laguna Blade on the, in one of these side lanes, or...? Oh, we're gonna have a jump in, arm out. Looks like he'll get slowed by crit to start things out. That's Illusory ore, but yeah. I so I think in this game, Lina, realistically speaking, only really ganks bot, right? When there's an arena, maybe you connect with a quick Laguna kill and go back to mid. But I think it's a very good point how Puck wants to play because you have some very good friends to play with Coil here. There's Nature's Prophet safe lane. Let's not underestimate how much this can pressure Lina mid. That you always have this plus one you can bring in behind the tower. True to try to bully Armel as yeah, Tim was like Tim in trouble. might take a tumble here, but there, ooh, okay, that was not the greatest coordination. Telekinesis out of the LSA. Now he's gonna try to turn this around, but we'll just do a little chip damage and away they go. Actually, Armel has a bit of a level advantage right now, obviously helping out with that first ward that you were talking about, but I mean, this is like a quarter level at this stage. So yep. he's, he's, he's done a couple more nice than He's four to nine ahead of Hobbit. Doing some more damage I'm out. I'm not sure Obviously if any XP drops. was taken by crit, but he's been in the mid lane a little bit more often than uh, the TNC yeah, no. members so far. Yeah, he might have taken one or two creeps of experience, but it definitely wasn't much. This is mainly adding up to the denies, I think. But yeah, as expected, mid overall pretty even, right? You have the water rune traits and the first first uh, the first ward rather be warded by Armel. Mm -hmm. Pretty much uh, constitutes a, a minimal advantage. Yeah, I. The night time. I mean, this isn't really a bold prediction or anything like that, but last time we saw Arteezy play the Nature's Prophet, 20 minute shard is going to be pretty important timing. Glad to get those two greater treants that really become annoying. Oh, Fly's uh, in trouble. Be able to push. Yeah. You can see Arteezy TPing back as Fly. Oh. All right, that was a little bit of a wrap around there. Bok. Like he's going to back off for now, but a sprout being used for a little bit of vision here. Now Bok taking some right clicks from Arteezy. Not going to be enough quite yet. Does get the vision in the end, though, and that will be a kill for Arteezy. It's kind of a separated fight between the supports and the, the cores, if you will. Is now Ice 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 in the top lane getting chased by Boomy. Has the Aphotic Shield applied, but here comes Crit to try to slow. Looks like Ice 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 will survive with that salve on top now. And they also find Tim's bot in the meantime, just in the end. They chased him really, really far with Nature's Prophet and Lion ultimately getting him. Okay. I don't know, there's been a little bit... I don't know if it's because they haven't played it so much. Oh, oh, oh that is unexpected from yes. Gabby. Preventing the use of attribute shifts. So a great double wombo combo there, if you want to call that, for EG. That's a huge kill on the laning stage. It is very, very big. They're starting to build a significant advantage at this point. 2k gold lead minute 6. But what I was going to say was these telekinesis usages have not looked like they were really on the same page. Yeah, I don't know. They, they haven't played very much Rubik, at least not in the playoffs here. Uh, seem a little bit not on the same page with how exactly they want to handle this. Coil, ah, but you can see that ult from Arteezy coming in with crits, right clicks to help out. He's actually going to survive for now. Gets up a nice LSA, but with Fly here to help out, that is going to be a dead Lina. And a regen rune on Abed, as the Fable is going to cancel at Tim's. Now getting surrounded, only level 3, so the Telekinesis, not a very high level. But you see the TP support coming in, and Abed's just going to be fine trying to get this farm here. Yeah, great start from EG. I mean, again, this is not a lineup that you want to start up behind on. You have to get off to a good start. The question is, how long can they maintain uh, this lead? Because there is a certain threshold, like the panel was talking about, like you alluded to, where TNC's lineup, just on paper, just the lineup itself is just going to be stronger. Yeah, it's definitely still far away. You need a couple of key items before you can truly start thinking about that, such as BKBs or Mantas. I'm always thinking about the late games. Now. I know, if you love your 75-minute games. When I see average. a lineup like, hmm, which one would be better in that 65-minute <laughs> game where the Tier 5 items drop? We did have a couple of those in the group stage, but the playoffs has not delivered the... Uh, the yeah, tier five items. True. Those those damn playoff teams getting wrecked. <laughs> Just getting too owed every time. But yeah, I'm I've been very jealous of all the tier five item games as we have the tier one tower to start things out here for Arteezy. Of course, this is the benefit of having somebody that, you know, can just TP all across the map. You have a lot of catch, you have a lot of push potential. 
looks like they're going to try to get some kill potential onto Boom. It looks oh, like that's going to be spear. a very easy kill. Yeah, Bach missing that spear, uses that arena. They're going to kill Gabby again. Very nicely done from EG, and they have the numbers here. Looks like Mars is going to be next. Bach getting slowed down to a crawl. They finally take out Boomy. That was a little bit of a delayed kill, but regardless, three going the way of EG. And the coil being used to take out Rubik as well. So four for nothing. This is starting to get out of control for EG. All right, if they're going to dominate them this hard in the first 10 minutes, then they're showing up today. This has been really good from EG so far. 9-0, and eight minutes in. Every rotation has been successful. Crate on the Earth Spirit has found, I think, now two kills on the Morphling off of level one silence. Um... For a grand total of five kills, you see his kill participation there. They're getting the value out of the Nature's Prophet safely and that they're looking for. When you pick a lineup like this that wants to dominate early, it has this ability to look like the most broken lineup ever when everything clicks. Mm -hmm. And then when it doesn't, you're like, what are we doing? But so far, everything is coming up EG. They ha they've... Yeah, there's just, like, nothing has failed, right? Every move has worked the oh way boy, they wanted. They can get Gabby again. He's gonna get science, but uh, gets the attribute shift off, and that was actually pretty quick timing there. Maybe there was a sound cue that uh, alerted him to that. But the thing about EG when they're successful, they, they've the always been this, forth. I say always, the last, I want to say, six months have been extremely good in the early game. Mm -hmm. As we see Arteezy inside the arena, another silence here. It looks like Morphling is, again, he actually went to the top lane just to die. That's but a on the three. Okay, that's a, that's a replay. You're welcome. Just want to get the play-by-play the -play correct again. As Bach is <laughs> going to die again, the replay, getting <laughs> slow to a curl. <laughs> I actually really <laughs> like that. Whenever there's a replay, you should re I redo it. cast it in the same way, too. Okay, if no, if I screw up, I get to redo it again. It's a mulligan. <laughs> it's an absolute mulligan. That. That's so, so nine and zero advantage. What I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by a replay I'm that sorry. happened literally five minutes. Okay, here's the arena. On to nothing! Okay? But it, it's interesting that EG is so good in the early game, but they weren't picking these early game lineups. Now that they are, they can expand that lead, and that's what, kind of what we're seeing right now. So kind of a cool strategy overall from EG. Yeah, I, I, I think this is the way they should approach the game now, right? Every time there's an arena on cooldown, we've talked about TNC's lack of team fight uh, outside of that. So whenever that's down, you just you go to you go to a lane and put pressure. You know you can TP in the Nature's Prophet behind and make trance. You already have the two smoke Dyer's supports, both level six, wrapping around on a level six off laner, mind you. Uh, very far ahead. Oh, They're going to go right away. Bach, yeah. oh, another toxin. Okay, they didn't really coordinate that perfectly, but it doesn't really matter when you have this kind of a lead for EG. Not even an ultimate available for Abaddon right now. That is, ooh, that's rough stuff. Eleven minutes in, still level five, and this will be a tier one tower going the way of EG. So this was a really good dive, uh, dive play from EG. I do feel like the casting of it could have been a little bit better, though. So I hope we get a replay so you can do it again. Um, yeah. It would be nice to have a do-over on that one. Every kill, let's get a replay today. <laughs> People are going to love that. I mean, when you saw with the, in the segment with the with the gyrocopter dating show or whatever, God, the, I had to re-listen to that over and over. Did that three over. Times. Here we go. You can see the Nether Toxin misses, but the finger of death from Fly. Unbelievable usage. And that's him his, I believe, first charge of the Abaddon game. not even level 6, you have to say oh, yeah, Abaddon again. not level 6. Good. But uh, he will you be shortly. You said Abaddon again, it's Abaddon. You so, have the chance to correct it. So time. here's the thing. So Ice Frog made a point. Okay, so the correct pronunciation, technically speaking of ages, is Aegis. It's, it's a literal word. We're going to see a jump in on the Gabby again. The silence is still enough. And the absolutely oh, another <laughs> death for Morphling. This is not a hero you want to die on this many times especially at this type of a stage. We have a Mars Arena used for defensive capability. Viper Strike is applied for now. Mana Drain on the other side of the wall with the break applied as well. Box still slow to a crawl. I feel like we've seen this before. Armel is on the other side though on the high ground as Tim's getting surrounded and brought down by EG. They seem to be everywhere right now. Spear does connect on Ice Ice Ice. They might be able to turn this around onto Armel instead. This is a bigger kill than on Bach. They end up trading a decent kill for an amazing kill. And EG just continuing to die. It's 14 to 0. Who's going to get the first kill for TNC, Cinder? With how this is going so far, they might not get one. You don't. Uh, we've only had. I think somebody was saying one game on record at a, at a TI or a major with zero kills. Is, was that actually right? I don't know. I. This was back at TI6. Oh, is that you saying that, actually? Yeah. Was it back, your team? Back at TI6 in the wild card. Yeah. 
We beat Execration, I think, 17-0. Do you know who was on that Execration team? Uh -huh. Who? Albin. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's right. You were telling me. He learned from that. And he's now applying it to his own games, and that's going to be... Now, even yeah. with the attribute shift going on for that long, yet Zero. another death. Boomy, he hey, has the ulti. he's got his ultimate this on time. On Abaddon. Abaddon is dead. But so is Rubik, and oh this is a goodness. shellacking of a lifetime. They are actually... Why is nobody playing the Lil Nick's voice line? That's true. That's a good. Are you guys gonna play the game? All anyway, 17-0. Yeah, this is this is a rough one. They are getting bullied. So, going into the series, we're talking about EGR lane heavy team. When everything clicks in the laning stage, they look like a team that can win against literally everyone in yep. any given game. Like when the lanes go like this, they are just one of the best teams in the world. And they're showing why. They've just been snowballing. <laughs> I appreciate everything. production showing a replay on literally every kill, but we need a double replay when TNC gets one, okay? <laughs> that is what we need to see. <laughs> Anyway, as we see Abed laughing there, I, I want to make a quick point that's really important, Sinner. The pronunciation of Aegis, it's actually Aegis, right? Right. Like, literally a definition, you can look it up. But Ice Frog messaged somebody at BTS and said, I don't want it pronounced that way. So if that's a... I'm fine with that, by the way. I like saying Aegis. But right. Abaddon sounds better to me. I know it's incorrect. I'm not saying it's not. And I prefer it. And Abaddon is a mafia boss that loves not 80s pop. I don't care. I also okay. say uh, Windrunner still. I just refuse mm. to make that change. OD, I just stopped calling whatever his real name is anymore because they keep changing it. So oh, it's just that OD. hero doesn't get picked, so you don't need to remember. That's anything. true. That's a good point. Although EG has picked it in the past. They uh, have. But again, not that, in the recent. That was NADPC, which almost amateur league at this point. Um, top top I'm allowed to say that because I'm an NA analyst. Damn, you're harsh. Don't Radiant's worry, four zoomers are coming top. out with it for sure. 17-0. I think a lot of the NADPC teams that EG had to beat put up a better Dyer's fight than 17-0. That is attack. correct. That is Radiant's absolutely correct. Tower is under attack. I mean, what do you think this is? Is this a draft thing, or is EG just playing really well? Is it... It's a combination, but I think a, a decent amount of it, honestly, is draft here. I think TNC's laning stage Radiant's just isn't strong. Tower. Like, Abaddon Dyer's Morph is a very is defensive lane, and I think Mars Rubik Dyer's can be good, tower. but they're playing against attack. an exceptionally powerful lane in a carry nature's profit. So... I think the only reason they picked the Rubik is because they want Fade Bolt against the Trance, but it just, it hasn't cut it. They just lost that lane. Mm -hmm. uh, in the mid lane, they drew. I think that was their best lane outcome so far by, you know, well, by far. And they, they've just been outplayed. Like, every single rotation from especially Crit's Earth Spirit has just borne fruit, and he's going to find another yeah. one here. And Crit has absolutely destroyed this game. Fly, will he expend the finger? No, he's not a greedy boy. I would have taken that charge for sure. We see a coil. Oh. Looks like it's not going to net anything, though. Anticipating the waveform. Yeah, but the Scion's onto Gabby again. Looks like he's going to be brought down. Well, he gets the attribute shift off, but it's just too much of an advantage for EG, as Boomy will be the one to get out. It feels like the Morphling is dying, and the supports are getting out a lot of these times. All right, it, I think it's time to predict champ. Yes? What is the final kill score? Uh, I'm going to say 27 to 1. And I, Armel will be the one with the kill. Who, who's going to die? What do you mean, who's going to die? On EG's team. If they get a kill oh, for... Um, it's always fly. <laughs> so we'll just go easy. I mean, I it could be crit. EG, EG in the game position they're in now, I think they're going to turn it into a sport to not die at this point. So I think they're going to do their very best to keep okay. it completely clean and keep playing their map advantage. So I'm going to be bold here and say they win one team fight with this Aegis and then the game ends. So I'll say 24-0. Okay. You actually think it's going to end with zero kills? That would be quite the accomplishment against a team like TNC, but man, they've just been totally destroyed in this game. I mean, I... We need, yeah. Okay, like, what can TNC do realistically here, right? So let's look at what kind of fight they need to find in order to come back. They have wow, to get a good arena. They need a blank dagger. They need a dagger on Mars so they can get an arena. Then inside this arena, the spear has to land. Lena has to be able to cast all her spells without getting silenced by three different silences. Or two silences and some stuns. But does Nature's Prophet actually have an Orchid? Yeah. Then they have three silences. He is not going Orchid at all. Okay, he's going full on right. He's going for the game ender. Yeah. Um, okay, B. I mean, it, it, it is possible for TNC to pull off this kind of fight, but there's just so extremely many conditionals right now that need to be met. Uh, ideally, Rubik steals probably Coil. If he can find that, that's very good against Earth Spirit and Puck itself. 
Notice how I said itself. I think Slack is very proud of me. That's lore accurate. Here we yeah. go. That's the goal. Again, crit, but the attribute shift did go up. Coil onto two. I'm not trying to do as much as he can to save his poor carrying Gabby. That's the 20th unanswered kill thus far for EG. And make it 21. Okay. I mean, as I expect, I went into this series saying I think TNC are the favorites, and they're showing why yeah. in this game. Wait, what did Kyle predict? Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't get to listen to I that I think segment. Kyle didn't get to predict, and that's why the game is <laughs> cursed. I see, I see. Oh, now Bach is going to take a Viper Strike with the Kuro. Oh my god, he just gets blown up. This is not remotely close. I, I don't even know how to hype this. 23 to 0. This could be good educational content for elementary school for kids to learn how to count. 23. What's after 23, kids? Well, <laughs> that's the death of Gabby, probably. 24. <laughs> That used to be my uh, lucky number, 24, actually. That's a very interesting oh. fact that I don't even want to expand on because I literally don't care. That's very understandable. <laughs> Why was it 24? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> No, I'm curious. It's such a stupid thing to bring up. You might as well let everybody know why you brought it up and ruined the broadcast. Because I was young and I didn't have any imagination and it's my birthday. It was really boring. <laughs> that is actually the worst. It is super oh, boring. It was so much worse but than I, I thought. I do remember I was in a theme park and I won a really big plate of chocolate on the number 24. So it wow. actually worked for me one time. It did. That is, that's crazy. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it. Oh, RTZ. Will not be able to stop that TP because he doesn't have a basher because nobody buys basher on Nature's Profit Center. Mm. Maybe an Abyssal. Yeah, he could have had a Hex. That's true. That would have been a better thing to say. We'll the just pretend that didn't happen. So 23 to 0 EG advantage. Now, uh, can we start talking about game two or is there any possibility of comeback here for TNC? Uh, it's not quite 100% win probability somehow. No, I mean, they, they can definitely, they can find a fight with a Mars Arena where all their spells combine and they maybe kill the Lion plus Earth Spirit early or find a stolen Puck Coil and kill the Puck. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're talking, like, good is not even close to good enough here. It needs to be absolute perfection and EG needs to make mistakes at the same time. So, a tall order. All right, I have a feeling TNC is going to get a kill here. You're not going to go on Viper first and get an access. I have a feeling Bach, all right, he gets off the Mars Arena and yeah, not a lot of damage being done by Ice Ice, but there's the LSA. This is the first kill of the game for TNC. Can they turn it around? Rubik dies, buys back. Armel getting right clicked despite being in the BKB inside that Sprout as well. He was brought down very shortly by Arteezy. Double kill for him. And now Gabby on the run has to waveform away. Boomy, same story but different result. Looks like he'll be taken out by the right clicks of Arteezy again. So it's a four for one with the buyback coming out on the Rubik. Well, you said 27 and one, right? Uh, I said, did I? Yeah, I said, I guess I'm not going to win. And also it was, it was Ice 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 that died, right? So, yep, that's true. That and he gets true. tipped by TNC. <laughs> they all in smoked five heroes and jumped the tankiest hero in the enemy team. And they got, they got him. They got him. They got him. They did. They sent a message to Ice Ice Ice. Don't mess with us. We're coming after your team. We need another few kills and we'll be there. Um, Damn, what an Dyer's absolute deep down. I mean, okay, top. let's look at this realistically, okay? <laughs> if I was looking at a game 21 minutes in, you're down 12k, that's obviously extraordinarily, like, the discrepancy is huge. Mm -hmm. But we've seen comebacks. We like, let's forget about the score for a second. Broke. All right, this oh, is going to be good for uh, TNC. And yeah, that's another death for Gabby. I'm trying to sit, think of a silver lining here, Cinder. Is there any way? It's a best of three. Yeah, there's, there's another game a silver lining. Imagine this was a best of one. That would be very sad. Yes. That, that would, would remind be. me of a certain wild card. That okay, you, you've been on the losing end of these games before. No, never. So. I don't lose. Well, tell me this. In, in this situation, as we see the first kill onto Ice Ice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice reaction. Thank you, production. Uh, this game, Fly was looking at him visibly confused. Like, did I well, do did you actually wrong? die? What did I do? Uh, but from TNC's <laughs> perspective, it, like not GGing out yet. Like, right. you, like what, what's the mindset going into game two? Like, do you want to try to at least get a combo off before doing so? Do you think mm -hmm. it's a more of too defeatist of an attitude to GG? I mean, if you're if you're holding on to hope that there is a type of team fight you can connect that you can win or at least break even in, which is also a win when you're this far behind, even trading two for two is really good, right? Right. Uh, if you see it, I think you play for it, right? 
I don't I don't think TNC is worried about fatigue. They have this one series today, right? It's only this one best of three, whether they win or lose. Yes. So you're, you're not like saving energy for a later important series that you don't want to spend your focus on. You, you can obviously play out one best of three completely focused. So uh, I don't yeah. blame them for it. I also think that just, you know, Nobody wants to GG out of at this kind of score, right? Uh, like you want to show what you can do. I've actually, I mean, I've had conversations with pro players in the past where they would actually have gg out because they feel like it's kind of demoralizing and it just, it's getting worse right. and worse and worse. And then it, it depends on how the morale of the team exactly. is, right? It if you're having your fun mentality. with it, like obviously you're not going to be having fun right now, but if you're not, if it's not getting toxic. I mean, they, they stacked four tips on Ice 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 after they lost a team fight four to one. True. I think they're having some fun at least. <laughs> You can see Gabby on the camera there. He was looking really happy farming these creeps. <laughs> Thank uh, God I'm not dead for 10 seconds. Gabby oh, is uh, with a big smile on his face here. I have 500 GPM <laughs> in my head. I actually have 250. Uh, he has 380. 380. That's, that's better than uh, not too bad. Uh, well, it, it is pretty bad, but yeah. given the circumstances, it could be worse. Yeah, I thought it was And worse. sometimes that's the lookout we need in life. It's that when things are tough, it could always be worse. Yeah. So, Thank you, Sinan. You could have started outlook. in the playoffs and lost two series 2-0. TNC. That's yeah. that could have happened. You could have been literally any of the other players. You could have won. The, you could have won in your region and therefore lost. And that is good that you did not get first. Yeah, absolutely. And Arteezy finally pressuring a tier three tower. Talking to Sana Abed. He will live. Nice try from Bok there. Good, it's good effort. It's basically impossible on level four phase shift. Um, but I like the attempt regardless. Like who knows maybe. You misclick a little bit of size to size, you're a little bit, yeah, I mean, little bit overconfident. Why not, right? Yeah, you can get a little lazy when you're up could. this much, for sure. Yeah. I mean, again, to fish for anything. 14k is pretty big, but we've seen comebacks before. Like the 29 and 1, I think, is slightly deceiving. Would you slightly? <laughs> no, <deceive? laughs> it really is not deceiving. It's a little they bit deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> so now, for once, I'm trying to be positive here. Shen and I am a machine. This is a big win. They are very far ahead. Can you please break it down for me, Sin? I don't know how this is deceiving. <laughs> what are you talking about? They're losing everybody everything said, everywhere. All right, I, again, everybody says I'm such a negative. I don't know what else to say other than there's a chance. <laughs> 29 and 1 is deceiving. I mean, there's also a chance we get hit by a meteor. Here right now. I mean, again, it's possible. You broke me. I actually have emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so funny. Yeah, the, this. <laughs> Radiant's top tower is under attack. Please stop laughing, Cinder. This is not natural for you. <laughs> oh, All right, I'm done the pressuring of tier three. Now Crit's gonna jump in on the other side here. Yeah, Abed's gonna use the coil just to make sure that this uh, Abaddon, as the higher beings call him, is that. Oh, the that... Mars Arena on nothing. Oh. Huh? RT, oh, BKB TP. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Has his assault Kiros, and they have Deso. I don't know if it's on him yet for Abed, but it will be coming soon if not. So, yeah, there it is. So, a lot of push potential now to try to end this game. And I, honestly, I would not be surprised. Oh, Roche is actually up. Yeah. Get second Roche. You get your shard on. I mean, Nature's Prophet is what I. I mean, actually, probably Viper, since you want to end the game. <laughs> That's even yeah, the more Vi minus. The armor. Viper one is really good here, uh, yeah. giving the poison attack the ability to hit towers and minus one armor per hit. Wait, is it? Can you go back, uh, Observer, to the Viper? Is it minus one? I thought they nerfed it to 0.5. Is it minus one? Oh, you're right. Okay. Because I remember they when it was first put in, it was... I mean, it might be 0.5. The thumbnail is three. So it's minus three is the most you can get, right? Or increase... No, no, no. That's increasing the, the max stack. So yeah. max stacks is eight. The original way that they had it with the talent and the shard was actually way better, but you had to get level 25, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a nerfed version of that. Like, you would literally just end the game instantly. Uh, it, it, honestly, it could be minus 0.5 armor. Sometimes the text is not updated. It, uh, yeah, in America, we, we round up everything, no. including our weight. No, the, the no, but seriously, oh, though, it's... it was actually crit that takes it. Okay. Oh, no, wait, that's remnant's evasion. But yeah, it looks like uh, Arteezy has. I don't. Did he? The... He bought one. So he's the one that bought it. Yeah, okay. I think so. So yeah, for the actually, you, you might be right. It might be the other way around. Either way, nature's it? profit shard is the these two big tree ants yep. you get. Big They're... boys are gonna go in. Very nice. And then the one for uh, Earth Spirit, you basically get vision of your stone remnants, which is crazy, and you get additional stone remnants, which sounds kind of boring, but it's one of the best shards in the game, for sure. Tower's gone. Is under attack. Yeah, that's a lot of minus armor now. It is an incredibly feel-good shard, the one on Earth Spirit. 
the, even disregarding the vision that you get from placing the remnants, just having so many, it's a really big part of the hero, the, the spirit or the, the remnant economy. Oh my oh, god, he almost died. Yep, that's pretty quick. Uh, if we click on crit, you can see that he's queuing up four BKBs. Hmm. We'll see if he gets those by the end of the game. Is this... Uh, he did go for the vessel, by the way. We've seen it used twice, I think, on the morph. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if it resulted in a kill. Most of the kills on the morph has just been silenced chaining. Yeah, Arteezy with the A just not... I mean, he definitely doesn't want to be the second person to die this game, so make sure he got that one. And, okay, he's going to get speared into the range rack, into the LSA. Mars Rina to follow. Can they actually take out Arteezy? Well, they're going to take out Mars first. Crit, okay, he will be the second kill of the game for TNC. Is now Boomy gets the Aphotic Shield up. Arteezy pops back up with that age of review. Oh, three, two, three. Very close. Yeah, that was a split second decision. We'll have to get an instant replay of that scoreline for sure. As Arteezy and Abed are just cleaning up. I believe. I believe GG's will be called here shortly, as it is now officially 36 to 3, and I think that's where we'll probably end. Or they'll just hold on long. <laughs> that's also a possibility. Tim's is uh, in defend here. Dyer's middle top. Throwing out the orb. And with the buyback, it on. did not defend. I mean, one benefit of being such low level is you'll be up soon, so you can have one more defense. After the Megas come up, yeah. of course. And that, you know, the GG's are called! Unbelievable to game by EG! 36 to 3 and Megas. To be honest, they are a little bit deceiving. Yeah, <laughs> it's deceiving, like I said.